my, my ethnic background, yeah. but it shouldn't be measured when it comes to consideration of Nigeria. Mm. I don't want the election to be run on my top. If anybody's going to talk to me, it's me. Right. But I'm not running because it's the top of Southeast. I'm running because I'm Peter Obi, who believes that I'm the best candidate for this election. Why do you say that, if, it, if anybody, it should be your turn? Because the people of South is another opportunity of serving Nigeria since independence of Nigeria. Mm. Every other section of Nigeria have had the opportunity, except us. And now tell me, why should Nigerians put their trust in you? Because there's a, tra there's a traceable record. Past record you can verify. I'm a successful businessman. And I started a business from scratch and built it to the point of success. I've been a successful person in the corporate world and I've been in government. In fact, nobody has my combination in this race. I started a business from scratch, built a business that is successful without any influence and everything. I've been in the corporate world where I was the director and chair corporations. Nobody has this combination. In terms of education, I've been to good schools. I might not have the best of degrees, like people can claim anything they claim, but I've been to the best schools in the world. I've had trainings in, from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Kellogg, I am the London School of Economics. Name them. Yeah. You know, if you're going to these schools, even if it's just for one week, two weeks, makes all the difference. In Seattle, in France, we haven't I been. I've been everywhere, and they are documented. So I've been to trains, so I understand what it means. And I've been able, in terms of governance, I have governed the state for eight years. And I can say that the, that state, I know where it was when I started, and where I left it. And I've been able to show that the only measure of development Human Development Goals, or HDI, which is Education, Health, and Pulling People Out of Poverty, are this very well. And above all, their money was not missing. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you can accuse me of, I left $150 million and over $30 billion and invested about the same amount. Nobody, I wasn't on the obligation. Nobody put a goal. There was no requirement. There was no need. Nobody put a gun on my head. And this is why, at times when this is happening in this country, people argue, I get worried. I did that without any condition. What I believe is the right thing to do. Absolutely. I spoke with one of the entertainers, Peter Okoye. He said, Mr. Peter Obi, if you do not deliver everything that you have promised, we would fire you. I think so. It should be so. Okay. I believe that it's time for Nigerians to get up and say, we voted you because you promised A, B, C, D, F. Mm -hmm. And you're not doing that. But remember what I said, whatever I promise is not going to be delivered overnight. I might not have 100% result, but I'm going to put 100% effort. Because people can entrust their faith in you and you let them down. Because by letting them down, we are letting the God down. Power is by grace of God. Fantastic. You must abuse grace of God. Fantastic. Mr. Peter Obi, I want to thank you very much for granting this interview. Thank you. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chamber that I came out with the idea that was more superior than what I came with. The difference between what I'm going to tell you now, which I said before, is implementation. Even if the worst person had come to Nigeria who didn't know anything, I started implementing what people have been writing for 28 years, <laughs> things would have changed. I just said, I was telling them a story last night about Abacha. How we went to we were almost supposedly be arrested for not paying duty. 
The port was congested. Everything was. Under our budget, you clear goods so faster than you can do today. And we did everything. So we're supposed to be under arrest because they said we didn't pay it. We didn't do anything. So we went to Abuja to see Abuja. We were 100. They said they are going to lock us up. <laughs> Only 30 agreed to see him. And when they said I should speak, I started talking. Halfway, the man banged his table and said, call I need the minister. He said, form today. What the congestion? You see this boy who is talking, which is me. <laughs> Chairman, thinker. <laughs> That's how I got involved in the port. And when they finished, everybody was coming for Abuja for clearing the port. But all he did, he took decision by listening to us. That's all. If they, all these things that have listened to you, we won't be here talking. We would have been showing different data. So for me, it's a learning process. My manifesto is light on it. But all those things you Go and check my record. I've governed the state for eight years and I've challenged everybody. Polly were there. I've been the only governor till today, the day I left office, I was not owing salary, pension, gratuity, or any contract or any supplier. And I left the three banks in Nigeria, which I say every day. Access Bank of Nigeria, Fidelity Bank of Nigeria, and Diamond Bank. I left hundred and over $150 million. Dollars, this Senna. And I have over 30 billion naira. And I'm Ambra State, you can go and verify. You know. I've never had a bottle. And I'm Ambra State, I've never bought me. There's no land allocated directly and directly by me. And I've signed over several thousands of CFO. And Ambra has never bought me a bottle of water since I left office. So you can go. We will fight and stop corruption. The first thing about stopping corruption is yourself. If you're not involved, your wife is not involved, your family is not involved, those around you are not involved, you reduce it by over 50%. Yes. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm sure Paul, you know that. We are committed. We can't disappoint these youths. We must build a new Nigeria. You know, before I came there.